Welcome to the lesson on triangle theorems. In this lesson, we will discuss three theorems and how they help us solve problems concerning triangles. By definition, a theorem is a statement that can be demonstrated as true. In all cases, theorems will be applied the same exact way and help us set up problems to solve for what we need. The first theorem we discuss is triangle sum theorem. This theorem states that in any triangle, regardless of size or shape, the three angles in that triangle, angles X, Y, and Z in this case, will always add up to 180. Thus, X plus Y plus Z will equal 180. Again, regardless of the type of triangle we may have. The next theorem is the triangle inequality theorem. In this theorem, we discuss the sides of a triangle and specifically note how any two sides of the triangle, when added up, must be larger than the third side. So A plus B must be bigger than C, B plus C must be bigger than A, and A plus C must be bigger than B. The third theorem to discuss would be the Pythagorean theorem. This theorem specifically refers to right angle triangles or triangles with a 90 degree angle in them. Now, with this theorem, we discuss the three sides, again, A, B, and C, and the unique relationship that side A, when squared, added to side B when squared, will equal side C when squared, when side C is always the hypotenuse, the longest side of a right angle triangle. Thus, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. An important fact to note about triangles is that the longest side of a triangle, the hypotenuse in a right triangle, is always opposite the longest angle. It becomes very important to remember when we're thinking about how to label triangles later on. So let's take a look at a few practice problems. Let's go ahead and find the value of x in this problem. Now, if I'm given that x is one of the angles and one of my angles is 35, I have another angle that's 45, how would I find the value of x? Well, because I know and can apply the triangle sum theorem, I can take 180 and subtract the other angles. So I can take 180, subtract 35, subtract 45, and get 100. So 100 is x. 100 is what's left over after I take away the other two angles from 180. In this second problem, I want to think about which of the following could be the length of the third side. So let's say I have two sides of a triangle, 6 and 9. And I'm going to try and figure out the third side. Which of those could it be? Could it be 10, 17, 2, or 15? Which of those could be the length of an imaginary third side that I want to connect these two existing sides. Well, by using the triangle inequality theorem, I'd have to use a side that is bigger than 6 plus 9, but also make sure that I don't pick a value too small like C that would end up being bigger than 9 itself. My only available option would be 10, because 6 plus 10 would be bigger than 9, and all the other possible combinations will be bigger than the third side. Let's do another problem, this time applying Pythagorean theorem, where we need to find the missing side. So I have a right angle triangle with sides 3 and 4, and I'm looking for x. I'm looking for my hypotenuse. So I will do 3 squared plus 4 squared will then equal x squared. So now I can apply the arithmetic. 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared 16 equals x squared. I can then get 25 equals x squared. And after square rooting both sides, x equals 5. My hypotenuse in this case is 5. Let's take a look at another Pythagorean theorem problem that might not have such a nice answer. So again, we have a right angle triangle with sides 8 and 5. And the hypotenuse in this case, again, is x. So I set up the problem 8 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. Evaluate the left side, 64 plus 25 still equals x squared. Add these two up and 89 equals x squared. Now as I square root both sides, I get x. Take the square root of 89, does not give me a whole number, and it gives me about 9.4. So in the cases where we get decimals, we can leave those decimals or leave it as a radical. Now, in our last example, let's see what happens if I already have the hypotenuse, in this case 13, I have one side is 12, and my last side is x. Even though my x is one of the legs, I must set it up as x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Everything must remain where the theorem has it in the first place. 
So x squared plus 144 equals 169. Subtract 144 from both sides and x squared equals 25. So x, the leg of our triangle, equals 5. <laughs>